believe it's not your age, this is really important, it's your experiences. So I feel like, even though I'm a baby boomer, I think like Gen X, and I'll tell you why later, it was the way I was raised. And so we are seeing a shift. Is that happening where you are? We're seeing how we can work smarter, not harder. So Generation X comes on the scene. Now, you've, you've got to understand, I'm going to paint a little picture for you. Generation X are people in their early 40s and their 30s. Do we have any Gen X in the room? Let's see a show of hands. OK, we do. I've got to see a show of hands of how many Gen Ys are in there. I've got to hold on. How many people in here are 30 or under? Oh, my goodness. Take a picture of that one. OK, whoa. This is, a, this is huge for me. I love this. Okay, so let's tell you, I'm going to tell you the Gen X story because Gen X wants you to know this story. Because Gen X, you're my favorite generation. You're my favorite generation because you are wedged in between two of the most self-absorbed generations there are. You are in between the baby boomer and Gen Y. I feel sorry for, let me see a show of hands of Gen X one more time so I know, okay, guys, oh, I'm going to massage all of you. Okay, Gen X. So here's the deal. The baby boomer comes on the scene. The baby boomer was raised by traditionalist parents or older. When the baby boomer cried, when the baby boomer cried, their parents would say, cry, cry, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> now those old baby boomers are the Gen X parents, okay, or traditionalists. So they are still being raised by tough parents. This generation was not coddled, okay? In fact, I asked Gen Xers, Gen X, does anybody remember their high school uh, counselor? People go, did we have one? They don't remember because nobody, Gen X, we didn't really care about you. Just, we just wanted you to, to get out and get going. Don't bother us. And so you're a generation that's very self-sufficient, okay? You're self-sufficient because the baby boomer mom goes off to work during the Gen X era. Before that, they were stay-at-home moms like Ozzy and Harriet. Now, that's very old. Now, Gen Y, you probably don't know that either. We'll have to do a little like a disclaimer on everything so I can explain. Okay, so the baby boomer mom goes off to work. There was no daycare, all right? And we look at the Gen Xer, the oldest child. Is anybody in the front row the oldest Gen Xer? Okay, you were, what's your name? Lisa. So mom goes off to work and she goes, Lisa! Mom is going off to work. She's nodding. How many brothers and sisters do you have, Lisa? She has one brother. What's, what, who, what's their name? So, Lisa, I want you to take care of Scott when you get home. I want you to help him get his homework done. Lisa, get your homework done, too. And, Lisa, could you please get dinner started? Make dinner. I got the crock pot, Lisa. All you have to do is plug it in. I've gotten all set. Set the table. Lisa, could you clean up a little bit so when I walk home, right, I come in the door, the house looks good, and we would leave. And then we'd say, Lisa, if I call you, I'm going to have a code. Because we were afraid that they would come through the phone and find you. I'm going to do two rings, and then I'm going to hang up. And then I'm going to call back. Right, Lisa? Lisa's nodding, right? And Lisa, lock the door. Don't let anybody in, right? And we left. We didn't get home till 6, 7, maybe even 8. And what was Lisa doing? She was watching MTV. She wasn't doing anything we told her to do. And Lisa was making tapes. Now, you've got to get this, Gen Y. This is what the technology was like when Lisa was 14. Lisa liked a song on the radio. She would get the tape recorder out, and she would push it next to the radio. Listen to this technology. She would listen for the DJ to stop talking, and then she would press record, right? <laughs> and she would make tapes of her favorite music. And then she got very creative. Her tapes had themes. Like, a, her, her boyfriend broke up with her, and all the songs were sad love songs, right? Right? Oh, I, Lisa's like blushing, right? And when she was happy and she fell in love, woo, all love songs. And here's the deal. When I speak Gen, Gen X, guys come up to me, and they go, yeah, but we did albums. We didn't do one song. At night, they played the whole album, and then we would record the albums. And then another Gen X guy would come up to me and go, man, you didn't talk about our bands. We would rig things together. The word is rig. There was no technology. Things were being held together with duct tape. <laughs> Gen Y, do you know what duct tape even is, right? Because now we just press a button. We've got the symphony behind us, right? We sing to YouTube. You've got everything at your head. But this generation, Generation X, this is a generation that discovered everything for themselves. It's the most creative of all the generations because we left you alone to do what you wanted. And you fell in love with your media. You fell in love with your music. And you didn't want to hide it. We trademarked and copyrighted, but you wanted to share it. And as you shared those tapes, and as we shared our music, you opened up a concept that is with us today. It's about sharing. 
And so now we have a generation that wants to give. And so we now are changing our point of view. And when you came on the scene, I'm sorry, Gen X, we called you slackers. We called you slackers because you wanted work-life balance. We wanted you to work. Forget about your kid's soccer game. Stay at work. We didn't want you to take time off. Work-life balance was just a thing we checked off of a list. Today, it's the way we are, right? You're innovative and creative. You're self-reliant and practical. You're, but you're questioning and cynical. We're sorry. You were the first generation that had to check their Halloween candy because a neighbor could have put razor blades into the milk duds. Gen Y, you had no idea. They couldn't go trick-or-treating because pins could be in the fruit. We stopped giving fruit altogether. Throw that apple away, throw that away. Because we were so afraid that you would get poisoned. This is the first generation that saw their priests on the cover of Time Magazine, not for good things, right? It's a generation that doesn't trust the janitor or the teachers. It's the first generation where we had Watergate and we started, we started not trusting. So we have a generation that doesn't buy in. They don't buy in and they're loyal to people, not organizations. So if they like you, if you're the boss and they like you, they're loyal to you and they will follow people rather than stay with organizations. And this is a shift in the way we're thinking. And you need to understand the trends and you need to understand the shifting because this is where the customer is. And so we are now going to a place of giving. This is a generation who doesn't like Hoopla Gen Y. They're not crazy that you want to have the, the employee of the day. They think that they don't want the employee of the week. They don't want celebration, right? They really just want honest communication. Gen X, you gotta take over leadership right now. It's your time. Because we have now the biggest generation. And here's the deal. People say, well, I can't wait for Gen Y to be over. After you, Gen Y, guess what's coming? It's gonna be more challenging. They say it's Gen Z. So what's coming is just the tip of the iceberg as to the changes that are being made.